Hello guys, and welcome to your 44th Java tutorial, in which we're going to be going over strings. Now you may be saying, hey, why the heck are we going over strings? It's this late point in the game, as so to speak, uh, but I'm just going to revisit the string topic because I don't think we've really covered it in as much depth as is necessary, because uh, really strings are a lot more than just strings of characters that we store in variables. We can perform a lot of stuff to these strings, a lot of different methods, functions that are, are very cool, and I think you guys will like them. So to start this tutorial off, let's go ahead and create a string s. Let's call this incredible string word, and let's create another string s1, and call that wordier word. How great is that? All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and demonstrate our first string method. And what exactly? What method is this exactly? Well, it is the dot uppercase method, dot two uppercase to be exact. S dot two uppercase, what exactly does this do? Well, it's kind of self-explanatory. Two uppercase will simply make all of the characters in the string uppercase. And in this case, those characters will be printed out on the screen. So let's go ahead and hit that OK button, and shabam, our word is now word, with more exclamation. Uh, and as you may have guessed, uh, this also works um, in the other way around. We can say to lowercase if our string was in all caps. If we run this, we will get a completely lowercase word. If our string is in all caps or partially in caps or whatever. <laughs> so those two methods are nice and easy, but what else do we have to offer? Well, we can also uh, do use two different methods uh, starts with and ends with to check what um, whether the certain string starts with or ends with a single character or a certain string but uh, either way let's move on to the demonstration so let's go s1 dot starts with uh, word so if we have our string s1 and if it starts with the string word uh, we want to print out something like this. Ah, there we go. Let's print out S1 starts with word. With word, better spell that correctly. Uh, well, uh, as it's spelled here, I mean. But um, if S1 starts with word, we want to print this message out. Why not? Let's add some pizzazz. Like so. Pizzazz has been added, and we can test this thing out. So s1 dot starts with word, and look at this amazing message s the one dot starts with word la la wo nice, that is a beautiful string right there. So we can do the same thing uh, with ends with uh, if that string ends with this little string, smaller string, then we still want to print that message out. And in the case of wordier word. Uh, we will have a true value for that because word your word does indeed end with word and it starts with it as well. So those were the demonstra quick demonstration of the starts with and ends with methods. So clearly uh, we've definitely seen this execute uh, as a true condition. We can also see it execute as a false condition if we check this on s, on our string s, we will get absolutely nothing. Shabam! nothing after that first printed out word because s does not end with word all right next method so we have essentially two different k two different equals methods uh one is s dot equals s1 like so we can test if s is equal to in string value to s1 or we can test uh this by ignoring the cases so if we have word your word with a ton of random caps in the middle we can essentially to just test their values uh, by ignoring the case just test their simply their string values by using this method here and if we actually make an example that makes some sense like this example we will see that this executes correctly and let's change this print ln to s1 and sr equal yay or aya whatever you want so if we run the program we will get a very nice display here s1 and s are equal aya yeah all right 
So equals dot ignore case clearly does work, but equals, as I've mentioned earlier, should not. And let's just do a really fast demonstration. No, it does not. It does not execute because s does not equal s1 if we do not ignore the case. All right, solid. So what else can we conjure up with our magical power of string methods? Well, we can also perform a concatenation of two strings. And what a concatenation is is when we simply add one string onto the other. We can add s to itself, as a matter of fact. So uh, what this really will do is, uh, let me just do this really fast. It'll print out word, word, because what we did is we added s to itself, and then we printed that out. We can also add s1 to s to the end of s and print that out as well. There we go. So just a different capitalization now. So concat, yeah, and concatenate is just a, a fancy word for add, to add together two things. And we can also fetch a character from any string by using the char at method. So if we wanted to find the character that was at the zeroth index of our s string, we could simply put s dot char at zero and uh, we will just get that back that first character w. And uh, if we say an index of 3, we will get the last character in this string, which is d, as it is here. And uh, if we put anything over that, we will get an <laughs> out-of-bounds exception. So try not to do that. All right, so the character at method is also works very similarly to the index of method. And what the index of method is, it returns, it's kind of the opposite of char at. It returns the actual character at, uh, returns the index of the first instance of this character. So if, if we say have uh, an instance of the character r, the first instance of this character r, it's going to return to us. The, the index of the first instance. So if we have like a ton of R's here later on, it's only going to return the index of the first one, which is 0, 1, 2. So 2 is that index. That's what we should be looking for to be returned. And if we, in fact, do run this program, we will get that 2 back here. And uh, we can actually also add another parameter to this index of method, like 4, for example, or another number. And all this, this is kind of like your offset. So it essentially says to start searching for r at index 4. So let me see where that is. It's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's going to start searching right here and uh, return the first instance of r after that point, or at that point, for the matter. And we get 4 which is essentially what this character right here. The next, the first instance of r after this offset. And index of also works with a string. Uh, we can have, say, d uh, r, like so. <laughs> and um, we can find the, and uh, if we scroll down here, we'll get a negative one, which means that no such, uh, occur no, no such thing occurred after the index of 4, so let's just change the index back to 2 or something uh, at a smaller number. We run, we hit this run OK and we get the index of 3, uh, which is in fact the start of that substring, this substring. OK, speaking of substrings, that is also another thing that we can do with strings. We can cut out small substrings. We can either do it with a one index like say 3, which will all that will do, it'll navigate to index 3 and cut everything from that point to the end of the string out and return that as a substring. Uh, and we will get that down here. Or what we can do is we can specify a starting index and an ending index, something like this, which will cut out a substring between those two values. So like so, <laughs> with a space there. Um, so that was the substring method. Uh, we can well, we all really only have a few practical ones left. We can uh, also have a replace method, uh, which can either replace two characters or two strings. So let's replace I don't know every occurrence of R. Let's replace R with I don't know L, <laughs> a 
random character that I just picked out off my keyboard. Now we have the same string with all instances of R, instances of R returned as instances of L, returned with just a ton of L's. And we can do the same thing with a string, let's say uh, JR, let's, instead of JR, let's replace that with ND, or something of, the, of that type. So now we have word dr r and d and d r. So I'm pretty sure you guys get the point at that actual level. So I believe that is almost it. There's really only one more that I can think of at this point, and that would be trim. And the trim method, what it does is it essentially removes the leading or trailing white space in a string. So if Let's say we just parsed this string from a file and we have a ton of leading white space and uh, ending white space, trailing white space as it's called, uh, and we actually print that out, we'll get our own string back. But if we print it without that trim method, we'll have a ton of white space to go along with that, and that is usually not what we want. So that was uh, really it. Uh, you guys are now completely proficient with strings. You have a ton of methods that you know how to use and uh, hope you use them. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. Uh, have a great day and peace.